Welcome to Early Bird Picker. My name is Rafa. I'm a reseller on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and Amazon. Currently in the Early Bird Picker nest. You can see at the edge of the garage snow creeping in. It's negative one out here in Oklahoma. The nest, aka my garage, not a whole lot warmer than that. So this is going to be a pretty quick video. This is the snowed in version of the weekly what sold. It's been snowing for a couple days. It's gonna snow even more. There's supposed to be a winter storm coming. I haven't been going to my real job much in the last week or two. Normally that'd mean a good thing for my reselling that I'd be having a lot more sales, but because of the upcoming weather that they're tracking basically for Oklahoma, Oklahoma doesn't deal with snow very well. We just don't get it very frequently. Like we'll go years and years sometimes without seeing maybe like a half inch or so. And so when we do get a lot of it, we just don't have the equipment in the trucks to clear the roads. So it basically just shuts everything down. Due to that, I made the decision to shut down all three of my stores, put them in as inactive essentially. On eBay, however, I set my like away time or whatever they call it for about a week, I think, but I did still allow sales to come through. And so that's what we'll be doing tonight. Two sales on eBay. I'm surprised that I'm still having sales on eBay. That's pretty cool. And I'll get them to the post office if I can. So hopefully I'll be able to still ship those out at least tomorrow. It's the next day I think that I'm concerned about with more snow coming. All right, so here are my couple sales for today. Sold. The new bright 12.8 volt lithium battery in untested condition. I got both of these new bright RC cars. I'm pretty sure at the same thrift store, just days apart. I got this Jeep Trail Cat, this really large one right here, and then this Polaris RZR, and I can't remember which one the battery was in. I think it was the Jeep. It was the first time I'd ever found a new bright RC vehicle with a battery inside of it. I always pick up those new bright RC vehicles. What I do is I save them up and then one day I go through them and I part them out. That's what I did this week is I went through and took them apart. Other than the big one, I need a different screwdriver than I think I have. But all the small ones that I had saved up, I parted those out. The shells, the wheels and the tires, if that's appropriate. Um, the front end bumper, you can take those off sometimes. But I did pop the battery out of this one. These batteries do sell in used condition, in untested condition. Cost of goods on the battery was 83 cents. It sold for $10 plus shipping in used, untested condition. Sort of untested condition. In the title, I wrote that it was untested, and then in the description, I wrote more about it. Basically, that I just didn't have the controller for the car. This is a change that I wish eBay would make. I wish they would put the option for parts or not working on every item basically in the entire eBay catalog or inventory. They'll do that for electronics, of course, but this battery pack technically goes under like RC cars or something like that. And the only two options for condition are new and used. So of course I listed it under used condition and then I just wrote the title untested. My concern though is, is that somebody's going to get this battery, it not work, and then they want to return it because they say it's used condition, it's supposed to be working, even though I had clearly marked that it was untested. So we'll see how this one turns out. If it doesn't turn out well, I'll just never do this again, basically. Sold. Sold. Lot of two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Action figures, Leonardo, and Rafa. <laughs> 2014 Playmates toys with accessories. Pretty large, 11 inches in length. Got a big lot of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. These were in that huge lot from over a year ago, garage sale. I don't remember what I paid, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't more than a buck or two. Sold for 25 plus shipping on eBay. It's Tuesday afternoon, and I had one sale come through today. Sold. Lot of one, two Tupperware, 12 inch bowls. Made in USA. Cost of goods, 75 cents for the pair. Sold for $34.99 plus shipping. It's Wednesday night. My store is technically still on away mode on eBay, but I chose, of course, to still let sales come through. Here are the two things that sold today on eBay. Sold. Harry Potter button up shirt. All over print, men's size large, with defect missing button. Cost of goods, $5.50, Goodwill. Sold for $10 plus shipping on eBay. This next one's a little better. Sold. Vintage Cousances by Le Creuset, 
made in France, number 23, nine inch blue enamel cast iron skillet. Definitely with some wear. Cost of goods, six bucks at a thrift store. Sold 50 plus shipping on eBay. Really happy to find my second Le Creuset piece in just like one or two weeks time span. I can't wait to keep looking for this. It's pretty strange that I found this like exact same color in that other one that I sold. Cookware, especially vintage cookware, definitely working its way up to my top categories that I love to resell and love to search for. It's Thursday evening. I have five orders, three on eBay, two on Facebook Marketplace. I finally decided to turn my store back on. I was able to drive an hour to work. I figured if I could do that, I could at least get my items dropped off at the post office. As you know, I was still letting orders come through on eBay. So I think the three that came through are strictly from ones before I had turned my store back on essentially. And then the two that came through on Facebook, I'm pretty sure came through after I turned my store back on. Sold. Vintage case logic. Storage case with a shoulder strap. It's got a hard storage case inside. If you lay the cassettes this way, it'll hold 30 total cassettes. If you put them in this direction, it'll hold 36. Cost of goods, 57 cents at the Oklahoma Barn Pick and Sale. Took an offer on this one for $12 plus shipping. It probably would have sold for a little bit more of these vintage Case Logic cases can go for some pretty good money. This one's not in great shape. It's got some dirt on it that I just didn't feel like trying to clean out. So I sold it, but I still made a little bit of profit on it. Sold. Vintage Getty bag. Getty is an old oil and gas company. They went um, bankrupt like in 2011 or 2012, but their stuff I thought would be still pretty collectible. Overall, this bag is large enough to hold that sleeping bag right there that I've yet to list. That's what was inside of it when I found it. Cost of goods was 18 cents. Sold for $19.99 plus shipping. I had this on auction for a week with no movement whatsoever. So once the auction ended, I took it off of auction listing and I put it on buy it now for $19.99 and it sold pretty fast. Sold. All clad LTD. Basically 12 inch skillet or frying pan. Overall, really nice condition. Cost of goods, 13 bucks at a thrift store. Sold 39.99 plus shipping on eBay. Sold. Lot of one, two, Under Armour, Men's XL Heat Gear, Performance Golf Polo, Heather Blue, Heather Red. Overall, excellent used condition. Both embroidered Nissan of Muskogee. Cost of goods, 70 cents each, $1.40 total. Sold on Facebook Marketplace for $35 with free shipping. It's gonna cost $9 to ship out at the two pound rate. So my takeaway before fees would be 26 bucks on the pair of these. I'm pretty happy with this. As far as I can remember, this is the first time I've ever sold anything Under Armour apparel wise, and I'm really happy this sold pretty fast. I'll definitely be looking for some more of that stuff, I guess. Sold. Take a look at this one. <laughs> I don't buy stuff like this too much, but this one, it's a vintage Pendleton, Sir Pendleton wool jacket coat, pretty long. Overall, the condition is pretty good. You can see just from looking at it from afar, it looks like it's in pretty nice condition. It's got a few issues once you really start looking at it. You can see where just some of the wool is missing, but for a jacket of this age, it's really still in pretty nice condition. What makes this one tough is they do not put the size on it for some reason. None of the sold comps that I could find list the size. So of course you just have to measure pit to pit, which was about 46 inches. So I listed it as a large, just based off of, you know, Pendleton's uh, listed website for the length and the pit to pit measurement. It's really hard when you're selling something that doesn't have an exact size tag. So I'm pretty sure in the item description of this, I just put a big disclaimer, you know, see photos of measurement, you know, measure a jacket of your own and see how this one compares just because you really just can't guarantee the size. And that's always like a concern for me. Cost of goods, 25 bucks at a thrift store. This sold on Facebook Marketplace for $65 with free shipping. It's going to cost me the $12 rate on Facebook Marketplace to ship this one out. So takeaway on this one's gonna be about 53 bucks before fees. 
This is now my second Pendleton to resell. What's interesting is both of them actually sold on Facebook Marketplace. Pretty often I evaluate or reevaluate how important it is for me to list stuff on Facebook Marketplace, whether taking the extra time to make the listing is worth it or not. Should I just be listing more and more things on eBay and just forgoing a second platform? But as you can see, I just keep ending up continuing to list on Facebook Marketplace. It does increase my sales. I think it's really important to not have all your eggs in one basket. I really like being diversified, having more than one platform. If I had more time, I'd do more than the two platforms. Of course, I have my third platform, Amazon, but that's mainly just for book selling. But as just far as my hard goods and all the other stuff, it'd be nice if I had a third platform just so I was really familiar with, but I just simply don't have the time right now. So for now, it's just Facebook Marketplace and eBay. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Early Bird Picker Snowed In. Please hit the like and subscribe. Drop me a comment if you want to. And as always, I'll see all y'all in the next video.